Stevie. Salutations, friends. It's pal, said Stevie, and it is uh, Friday morning. I got a little lull in work, and uh, I'm taking a little coffee break. I'm drinking some coffee out of my limited edition EDC uh, roundtable uh, mug. And for those of you that know, uh, I take my coffee black, like my soul. Indeed I do. Uh, if you haven't gotten in on the customer appreciation uh, drawing yet, uh, I'll link the video up here uh, to the EDC Roundtable a video that goes over all the awesome prizes that you can win in the uh, drawing. Uh, if you pick up one of these bad boys on edcroundtable.com. But I digress. Um, I uh, have something to talk about. And uh, it's knives related. Uh, specifically, uh, it's in regards to my favorite, yes, my favorite uh, knife maker slash knife designer, uh, one Mr. Scott Stills from uh, Edgy Blade Works. Uh, this is my Edgy Blade Works uh, Forest Hank. Uh, I'll leave that out there. But y'all have seen me uh, talk about Scott Stills and Edgy Blade Works uh, plenty of times. Uh, the first model I ever showed off was a uh, tipper. Uh, and I will link that video up there as well. But a uh, little bit different from this one. Uh, that was his Jawbreaker edition that had uh, the hole uh, for the deployment. At Blade Show West 2023, uh, I picked this bad boy up. Uh, this is the thumb stud variant. Iron lock, uh, end cuts, carbon fiber, uh, all titanium hardware, titanium liners. Uh, magna cut blade, uh, all satin polished, high polished, uh, backspacer, pocket clip liners, and blade. Fabulous, fabulous knife. I absolutely love this knife. I love the tipper. Uh, I think it's a fabulous design. Uh, Nuz has picked up a tipper. Steve Clare's picked up a tipper. Uh, Iggy uh, just picked up a tipper. Uh, so I got some friends that also agree and have picked up a tipper of their own. Again, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous design. Um, I got uh, no complaints about this. Uh, some might say, hey, that's a funky blade shape. It is, and it's extremely useful, and um, it comes in handy. Uh, but this is all uh, handmade by Scott uh, out of uh, his home. in. Uh, he lives outside of Ashland, uh, North Carolina, who uh, was hit really hard uh, in the aftermath of Hurricane uh, Helene? Helena? Yes. Uh, and he uh, and those folks out there have had a one hell of a time. Uh, tots and pears uh, go out uh, to all of them. Um, Scotty's doing well. I have talked to him. Um, but yeah, it's a rough go. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it to Blade Show West this past uh, week because of it, but uh, definitely give your love to uh, all the folks out there in uh, North Carolina. But uh, yes, uh, Tipper, fabulous model, fabulous model. Um, Scotty does amazing work, uh, but this is a custom knife. And uh, y'all know uh, custom knives, um, there's a hefty price tag uh, that comes with these. Rightfully so. I don't think it's unjust uh, for the prices that are charging. But uh, sometimes people are not able to experience uh, a custom knife like this. And, um, you know, that's just the way uh, the cookie crumbles. Well, uh, every once in a while, a custom knife designer, custom maker, uh, will work with a production uh, company to get one of their models out. And that's exactly what has happened with uh, Scott. Uh, Scott has uh, licensed uh, the Tipper Design to uh, Cancept. And this is the pre-production model uh, tipper. See his Edgy Blade Works uh, logo there. Uh, looks exactly the same as his one that is uh, on the tipper there. 
Uh, so yeah, now uh, those of you that are into Edgy Blade Works uh, Tipper Design uh, can uh, pick up a uh, production model. And you can already see there are definitely some differences. Uh, but I gotta say, uh, so Scott sent me this a couple weeks ago. I've had it for a little bit. Um, I've carried it around. Um, there are definitely uh, some differences uh, to it. Uh, however, uh, it, for the most part, stays true uh, to, the, to the design. Um, you can already see... Uh, well, let's start uh, with the show side. Uh, you can already see there are uh, some uh, differences uh, in the blade itself. Uh, so, well, big difference between these two. And I believe he has made a, a frame lock version of this before. Uh, but mine is a liner lock. This is a frame lock. That's the big difference there. Uh, and you can see that uh, the blade uh, is slightly uh, different. It's not as uh, wide or as tall here. Um, but for the most part, uh, overall the same. Uh, you don't have the same little uh, little swedge there uh, on the uh, poon. Uh, and you have, but you still have that uh, long, uh, it's kind of a tanto-y uh, type uh, blade. I don't know exactly what he calls that uh, blade shape, but um, you can see there's a little bit of difference there for sure. Uh, obviously, this is going to be made all overseas uh, in China by Cancept versus uh, being made uh, in the good old US of A here. But uh, yeah little bit different uh, handle uh, shape as well. Uh, it's got more of a... Uh, it's it's rounded off more. or I don't know how to describe that, but you can see uh, the differences there. And because it's a liner lock, or excuse me, this is a frame lock, uh, you got a, a different placement of the body screws. And then uh, they are utilizing pivot collars on this as opposed to just the uh, standard uh, hardware. Uh, we still have... A uh, similar uh, backspacer uh, that uh, they are very, very similar. And then moving around uh, to the other side here, uh, you see that they kept the uh, pocket clip basically identical. Uh, the, the pocket clip is identical to that. Um, but yeah, uh, similar uh, thumb stud placement uh, as well. Uh, they did remove uh, the jimping that uh, Scott has uh, on the uh, top side of the blade. Um, you can see uh, is no longer there. And I don't have the uh, calipers out, but the blade stock looks very similar. Uh, but you can see if we go pivot to pivot there, uh, the blade is just a little bit longer than the uh, on the production here uh, on the left than the... Uh, custom on uh, the right. And again, I don't have specs here. Uh, I could get out the measuring tape and all that. I'm not going to, so you'll just have to take my word for it. But uh, definitely changes the feel of the knife. Uh, not in a bad way, by any means. Uh, as ergonomically comfortable as uh, this is, I gotta say, uh, I'm not uh, I'm not mad at all uh, with the redesign of the handle there. And uh, I actually uh, I like what they did with the blade shape. Um, I'm not going to say I like this one better than my uh, custom by any means. Uh, I don't. Um, but I do think that it's a great knife on its own. Um, I'm going to give the nod 100% uh, to my uh, custom because I love it and I adore it. And I know that Scotty handmade this. Uh, however, uh, his uh, design work went into this. And so it's equally uh, as awesome, in my opinion. And... Uh, yeah, I wish I had the specs for you guys. I don't I don't even know what the blade steel is on this. I don't know what other variants are going to be coming out. I don't know the price point, um, but it is uh, it is very good. Uh, this is also uh, still running on uh, ball bearings. Uh, Lockup is solid. Uh, you have a uh, steel lock insert. Well, I just messed up my camera angle uh, by doing that. But uh, I just spine whacked it, and uh, it's passing the spine whacking test uh, for sure. So lockup is solid. Um, easy access to uh, the lock bar. Uh, the pocket clip uh, works just fine. It's been going uh, in and out of pocket uh, since I've had it. Um, I got no problems. Uh, you know, it's got some spring to it. I'm in a fight with it, but 
You can see it, it easily uh, slides uh, over the Hank there and uh, goes in and out. So not deep carry uh, by any means, um, but yeah, a pocket clip is good to go. And I do like that, uh, you know, if you look, they did, uh, it's the exact same pocket clip, basically. Uh, studs that they're using uh, seem fine. Detent is on the strong side for sure, uh, but you can still uh, deploy it, uh, no problem. Um, I got no problems whatsoever uh, flicking it with my uh, middle finger or uh, with the studs. Um, it doesn't seem to be too lock bar sensitive, uh, so uh, I'm able to flick it uh, and uh, deploy it with my left hand as well. So that's nice. Uh, sometimes lock, that's one of the reasons why I don't like uh, lock bars, or excuse me, uh, uh, line, or frame locks. Jesus. Oh, lost my train of thought there. I need more coffee. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't, uh, I prefer a liner lock um, over a frame lock, uh, but I have pr plenty of frame locks as well. Uh, but the action is super, uh, super smooth, absolutely, um, if you want to fidget with it. Uh, I haven't done anything to this, but I have to imagine... Okay, so I was going to talk about that, uh, and I may as well now. Uh, I was going to say, although the studs are good to go, I do find myself slipping off from time to time. Um, so one of the things I like about the studs that uh, he uses from Tight Connector is they're kind of dome-shaped. So uh, you're getting up underneath it, and it's got a little bit of a ledge. And although there's really no texture to these studs, I get up underneath there every single time, and I never slip off whatsoever. Uh, these are more uh, traditional style, and they are slick right there. So every once in a while, you're going to slip off. So uh, that's some little notes that I'll give to Scotty about that. Um, that's really uh, that. Uh, and I would say that uh, put the jimpin' back on. Uh, if they don't, okay. Uh, but I, I think, uh, you know, they kept the same uh, little uh, ramp there, as you can see, uh, on behind the studs. And I think uh, having a little bit of jimping right there uh, is good to go. Uh, that would be my preference uh, to see on the production model. But uh, the access, again, to uh, the lock is uh, good. Um, Lockup is solid. I have to imagine this is going to be upwards uh, of 200, 240, 250 ish range um, for a. Uh, and these are not contoured, uh, these are flat uh, titanium. But I have to imagine, uh, depending especially what the blade steel is, that Cancept is looking at uh, at least uh, above $200 on there. So it's still going to be out of some people's price ranges, but um, that's still. Uh, well under that's a quarter of the cost of uh a custom uh tipper for sure so uh not a bad deal though and uh this will now i think uh it's an awesome way for scotty to get uh his designs out in front of more people and so uh yeah uh, i don't have the release date on this as uh either but i do think uh it should be coming out uh soon and, uh, yeah, I think it uh, now gives y'all the opportunity to uh, check out uh, Edgy Bladeworks and all the awesomeness uh, that uh, he's doing. Uh, but speaking of prototypes, uh, I've shown this off before uh, at Blade Show Atlanta earlier in the year, but ha -ha, my Blade Show West pickup this year was the pre-production Edgy Blade Works Cybin. Uh, the very first knife I ever saw from Scotty. And I just talked to him. Unfortunately, he sold it. I asked him if he could send it to me to do a, a comparison. Uh, but he doesn't have it anymore. Uh, so I might need to get on the books and actually get a custom Cybin. But uh, this is also going to be released by Cancept. Uh, this is in November, I believe. They will uh, have these uh, for release. And uh, you have this bronzed frag pattern. Damascus blade. I don't have the details of what uh, the core is, but it's a gorgeous, 
gorgeous uh, Damascus, my first Damascus blade. I got some. I got a custom Damasteel blade, but I've never had any uh, regular Damascus. And I will uh, somewhere here. I will roll in uh, what the production or what his custom uh, looks like. Uh, first time I ever met Scotty in person, he had it on him, and uh, this is the design that I was like, "You got to be." I said he pulled it out. Uh, this is Blade Show 2022, and I said, uh, "Whose knife is that?" He goes, "Mine." What do you mean? He's like, "I made this." I said, you make knives? He's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Holy crap!" I just knew Scotty from. Uh, I knew Scott from. Uh, he was someone that uh, participated with the channel and would comment uh, in videos and was in some of the live streams, and then ran into him at Blade Show, and I'm so glad we did. It was on the last day uh, that we ran into each other, and he had his custom Sybin, and yes, Sybin, as in. Silly Sybin. Uh, I will put the uh, link to... Maybe I'll flash it up in here or put the link in the description for uh, the... Uh, Cancept did a nice... Um, on, on their page, they have a write-up on Scotty and kind of uh, what... Uh, the details of uh, what this will be. But, uh, yeah, this is gorgeous. Also a frame lock. I have a little bit of problems uh, with the pocket clip on this one uh, being a little bit stiffer than what's on the tipper. Uh, so I'm going to give him some notes on that as well. But yeah, uh, this is amazing. Uh, love that. Uh, and then my favorite knife in my collection. Also, I can't not show it off. Uh, this is the Edgy Blade Works Custom PNW. Uh, this is a knife uh, that is near and dear to my heart, and I absolutely love it. Also a liner lock. Uh, fabulous, fabulous knife. Yeah. Love the uh, P&W, but that's, uh, so this has got to go back, but these three are mine, saying, uh, won't ever leave the collection. Um, and... There's so many awesome models that Scott uh, has got going on right now. The Astral, uh, the Geist, the Grunt, um, Forest. Uh, I'll flat. I'll find a picture and flash it up here. Forest, uh, Forest Hanks. Uh, he has the most badass knife I think that is out there. Uh, he's got a custom goon uh, from uh, Edgy Blade Works, and that is my all-time favorite knife. I've handled it. It's freaking fabulous i love it so much literally i think the most badass knife out there but uh yeah also um and let me see if i can show this uh real quick uh scott just recently uh started a uh facebook group uh so if you go to uh facebook uh edgy blade work squad and i'll put the link to this uh, in the description as well um, but, uh, man, he just posted, um, so let me back up real quick. Uh, this was one of the ones that was going to come to Blade Show with him, this, uh, Astral, which is just a phenomenal model. Um, but he posted a video of, uh, his, and a description of everything, uh, that he did to, uh, he spent eight hours putting the dimples into this, uh, titanium and he's got a video of him uh, on there uh, doing all that uh, so if you want to check out and look at that one oh that's such a badass piece uh, if you want to uh, join the group and check out some of uh, Scotty's work um, this is a grunt I believe yes uh, with red paper micarta um, that's the astral uh, there's another uh, tipper but yeah, a spot for people to share their love of... Uh, that's a Geist, I believe. Yeah. Um, but you can uh, check out uh, all things Edgy Blade Works on that uh, Facebook group, uh, which is cool. So uh, I encourage you to do so if you are into Edgy Blade Works or would like to be, into, uh, like to be exposed more to uh, Scotty's work. Uh, in the meantime, though, uh, that about does it for me. Um, yeah, so as uh, I get more information um, on the release date of the uh, production tipper, I will definitely keep you mofos posted. Uh, but let me know what you think. Um, yeah, 
I, uh, and I, I, I think a lot of you uh, are aware of my love and uh, share in my enthusiasm of uh, Edgy Bladeworks and Scott Stills. I uh, hope to have him on the live stream here uh, again before too long. But yes, uh, look out for the Edgy Bladeworks uh, tipper and the Edgy Bladeworks uh, Sybin uh, being released by Cancept. Um, or uh, if you want to get yourself a custom from Scotty, uh, reach out. Uh, he'll be linked in the description. And uh, get on them books. So uh, that's all I got for you folks today. I truly appreciate you tuning in. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to do so, uh, please go ahead and subscribe right there. And then uh, whatever that video is, maybe check that out and give that a like as well. Uh, and until the next one, I bid you mofos... Adieu. Bye-bye.